Hey everybody, and welcome to another late night non-league adventure, uh, season five, episode one. Uh, Curse Ashton Football Club on Football Manager 2016. I've got to be quiet once again. If you've been with us from the beginning, you'll know the reasons why somebody's in bed. So I've got to be quiet. Uh, if you joined us last time, we ended the season um, with a win against Geisley, uh, preventing them from finishing. Um, in the playoffs, and in the process, finishing top half officially. Uh, top 11 is top half, 22 teams, so we hit our target, which in, in the end, we the board were pleased with our management. Um, yeah, basically, it, it was a disappointing season, and you know, we're going to go through some of like you know, the end of the season awards. Um, we were set an initial budget of 6.5 thousand uh, pounds. Yeah, six thousand five hundred pound a week uh, wage budget and transfer budget of nothing again. So it's pretty much exactly the same as before. Um, I, I have highlighted this is because I, I've kept getting linked with loads of jobs. Um, but meanwhile, end of season awards, Joe Pickett picked up everything this time. Sign of the season, young player of the season, goal of the season, fans player of the season. Awesome, um, great signing. <coughs> This is our season review. Uh, we expected to claim a top half finish and we did just that. Uh, best result highlighted as the 3-0 uh, no win against Gainsborough. The worst result, basically the Harrogate game where we lost 3-0. No. I'm pretty sure there was a worse game than that. Uh, but yeah, um, we used 28 players. Average attendance was 304, which is 7% full, which is terrible basically. Um, moving on to the next one, we had a, you know further talks, takeover talks. Um, and so the, 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 we thought there were going to be a breakthrough in the Kurzash talks. Alas, meanwhile Boston won promotion via the playoffs. Um, it broke down. It did actually break down. Um, so nothing really happened there. So the consortium pulled the plug. I uh, got a personal message from Harry Galloway saying thanks for your patience, blah blah blah. Um, all these players are set to release. So, like, Matty Downing, who was terrible all season. JJ Hooper, because he won high wages. Most notably, no, most notably, Liam Thompson. Too much money a week. £600. Lucky to build for next season. Um, and to start this, well, going into the 1st of June. Um, but confidence update, it was just secure. Which is, it's better than stable. But, you know, like I said, it's, it's not ideal. Um, FA Cup was won by Manchester City. And the biggest overachievers was were Yeovil. Not entirely sure where they finished, but uh, you can see exactly what happened there. And former player Mirza Sajic got the top goal scorer for the competition with 10 goals, which is pretty good. Um, then this happened. Eastley offered us a job. And I was thinking now, I'm not entirely sure what I can achieve now at Curzon Ashton because we're struggling financially. And I'd you know, we've gone backwards, couldn't really do anything with that team. So I'm thinking, what, what can I do? And I thought, well, I'll attend the interview and see what happens. Um, a couple of things that they did want to, to say when I went was they like to play possession football, play attacking football, make the most of set pieces, and sign high profile players. They are opposed to basically the same way we played in the last season, which obviously, if I do take this job, um, I've got to adapt tactically because, you know, I've got to play possession football and that is what they're wanting to do. That's the main thing they're really wanting. So it was a big decision. Um, so did all the interview <laughs> and they hired us. I got headhunted. Yeah, I got the achievement headhunted. So, yeah, I took it. It's £700 a week. I don't know if I've got it on here, the actual thing. I don't think I have. Um, and I believe this is the last, I want to say, the last one. I'll have to quickly do that, sorry about this. 27. No, we've got a few more apparently. Yeah, sorry about that. But basically, um, we're getting paid, I think, seven. well, I'm getting paid £700 a week, which obviously is better than what I was on at Curzon Ashton. Not by much. I think, I believe I was on about 450 but it's still better. And we're in the league above. Eastleigh finished 16th last season. This is what I was showing here. 
And the year before that, they finished sixth. That was after getting relegated from League Two. So they have actually been in League Two, which does mean that they have been. Uh, they are now pro uh, a professional status. Just looking here, the winners of this particular season: Chelsea won the Premier League once again. Uh, Palace, Bournemouth, Bournemouth picking winning the yo-yo side up and down, up and down. Um, yeah, that's basically who what happened there. For those who were bothered, Leicester got relegated last season, and they got straight back up, I think. Um, with Norwich and Swansea going back into the Premier League, no real changes there. Ipswich getting relegated though, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, parts were from League One, so they've gone from League Two into the Championship now. That's pretty good for them. Up with Millwall and Swindon. Um, further down, Newport County won League Two. They went up with Leighton Orient, Blackpool, and Dagenham and Redbridge. Um, and the Vanarama National League. Uh, Barrow and Epsleet, well Barrow won it, Epsleet, Eps Fleet joined them. Worth noting, I was tempted to try and apply for this job here, because they are managerless yet again. Bolton, a massive financial turmoil, every season finishing 24th. They now find themselves in the Verama um, and show League North, which is not what you'd expect when they're starting the championship. And the last one I think here was just the Verama North and the uh, south. We actually got worst signing of the season. We also got the second placed signing of the, like actual signing of the season in Joe Piggott. So we got the best and the worst. Well, second best and the worst. And yeah, we we weren't really noted. N we weren't really anywhere else. But I'm gonna do the transfers in the actual in game, and I probably will be doing that from now on. I might do it like at the um, intro screen. I this. Um, obviously with, with a different badge, which I have got one prepared, ready. Um, but, um, like I said, I'll probably do the transfers and things like that through there and get uh, like a proper decent look at, at what's what. So just join us in a second. So this is in-game now, and basically we've got Margate today, the first game of the season. Uh, job security is, um, you know satisfied with our management so far it's, we haven't played any games we've actually gone up slightly because we've actually um got like made a decent signing they wanted a high profile not really high profile to you and me probably if you're familiar with probably the leagues above league one um which i'm probably most familiar with the championship but more so you, you know e nearly equally premiership and league one I've got a, a decent, very, I like to think I've got a decent knowledge of League 1 as well. League 2, a little bit less so, but I know which teams do well, i.e. Portsmouth, Plymouth's quite regular in the top 6 or so recently. Um, yeah, so we've got a balance of £439,511. Uh, we are projected, um, I've got a projection here, in three seasons, will be £3.38 million in debt, which is not a good place to be, and this was one of the things that we were on about in the uh, interview, saying, oh, you could, how, are you, how do you think you're going to manage, basically, with limited funds, and it's a case of, you've just got to do the best you can. I've only got a one-year contract, if I just go to my profile, um, and go to my contract, it's only a one-year contract, £7 per week, that's fine, you know, my profile as it is now, Starting to get quite good actually. Motivation started on 20, but everything else is going up slightly. Attacking's at 18 now, I believe it starts on 12. That's pretty damn good, if you ask me. 204 games, 8 to 1 1 is not great, but that's because of the relegation season. I think that's proper hampered my score there, if you like. So, going to the transfers, what we've done. Transfer history. I'll start with the outs first. There's some players here that I wanted to keep, but I just couldn't. I couldn't afford them. We were about £3,500 over our uh, wages budget, and we couldn't do anything, really. Uh, most notably, Roger Riera. Taking a little while. Um, I could try attempt to try and sign him back again. He was our best, best player, pretty much, uh, at the club. And the guy, the, he's got an agent and his agent wanted about £55,000 and we've got no wage budget sorry, no transfer budget um, and we had at the point, at that point no wage budget neither to try and compensate the fact that he's got such a high signing on fee or a, a, agent fee 
I couldn't get out of it, so I've had to let him go, unfortunately. As disappointing as it was, because it does look a very, very good, barring the anticipation centre-back for this level. Um, other players, I've noted, I'll just highlight them like this. He looks pretty decent, but again, only two star, two and a half star, not great. Again, two and a half star. They're all the players that didn't really have any current ability that was good enough, really. I decided to let them go. Um, the only one really I wanted to keep was Roger Riera, as you can see there, four star, four and a half star potential. Um, yeah, all these guys, I let them go. The one player that I left to last was only Norbin, because it was a three star player at that point. Um, they seem happy that I've let him go, but he was a decent player. But he was on £1,100 a week, and that was extortionate. Um, so if I just go to... I'm going to go to the, the squad first, and you can see here the star ratings. Um, the players that stayed here from last season, there's John Maxted, the goalkeeper, uh, Josh Murray, he's a, good, a decent looking right back. Um, Bobby Mosley is the captain, um, he looks pretty decent as well. Oren Jackson stayed from last season, he's only two star, but he's got another year on his contract, so I've, I've decided to keep him. Worth noting, if he plays 20 games, he gets an automatic... No, 30 games, he gets an automatic um, contract extension or something. Same as one of the players have signed a goalkeeper, the backup goalkeeper. Um, he's as good as John Maxted, Max if I'm being completely honest. Um, he's got 20 games, I think it is. It might even be 15, I'm not entirely sure. There's three players uh, that will get things. But I've had to rely mainly on loan players and a couple of you know, half decent free transfers. Uh other players that have stayed from last season, Joe Partington, he looks pretty decent, three star. Uh Daniel Galbraith, he looks pretty decent. Um who else? Raymond. Got him getting tutored by Partington. He looks like he's got decent potential. Mason Duff is another one that's been here already. Jimmy Spencer as well. Good all round play, just not the quickest. Um Eaton Collins is one that stayed here from last season, and these are the three Edish youngsters who have uh, been here the last couple of years, uh, uh, what seasons I'm assuming. Oh, Lewiston, oh no, he's a new player I've just signed. So I'll go into the transfers now. Transfer history. So, we started off with the first one, which was Callum Ellerslie, and he's pretty good. Got him uh, on loan from Notts County. Um, he's a fairly quick defender, decent at heading. Um, marking and tackling needs to be worked on but he's deemed a three star player for this level and four star current ability and the things that did impress me mostly was the anticipation and concentration and decisions that less so has me a little bit worried he's going to try and take all the team on but uh, I'll have to wait and see but he's actually he can actually play as a ball playing defender which is it strikes me as a very odd for someone who's got passing of 10 and vision of 8 Composure of nine, I suppose. It's decent for a defender, but never mind. Um, this was the goalkeeper. We've already looked at him. Signed him on a free. He used to play for Stoke City, so he's not amazing. He's got a little bit of potential. I just thought, oh, backup goalkeeper. The other got backup goalkeeper was half the guy, half the player this guy was, and he was on five hundred pound a week. So I technically call it like a hundred and fifty pound signing a week. Um, this guy I'm really excited about. Um, Adil Nabi is very quick, is very, ag well, no, I'm going to say agile, but it's not really agile. Very good off the ball, composure is pretty good, anticipation is good, finishing 13, techniques 13. Um, hasn't really set the world alight in the friendlies, I have to say, although we've we had about three tricky friendlies, like to, I want to say. But he can play false nine, which is the first player at this level I've ever seen at false nine. So I'm really excited to have him. And he signed, he used to play for Cambridge, and before that, Delhi. He played to start some, the game at Delhi, and used to play for West Brom, of course. Never make, making a breakthrough. Um, next one is Calum Geraldo Martin. Uh, Antiguan and Bermudan. Barbudan. Oh yeah, Barbados, yeah. Antiguan and Barbudan. Um, winger. Um, I'm going to be playing as the inside forward. Um, so 
yeah, I'm looking very, I'm very much looking forward to this guy. He places his shots and he shoots from distance. I'm hoping he can be accurate, but he's got some really good stats here. Um, natural fitness is very good. His pace is good. Determination is very good. Off the ball's good. Um, passing's even decent. Work rate's good. I'm really excited about this player. He's a three and a half star player for this level. Should be more than capable of doing things, or doing good things, should I say? Um, at this level, he's only on 650 pound a week. We've signed him from Luton, where he got released from Luton, and we've uh, and they were they are now in League One. Um, he's deemed not good enough for that level because he didn't even play a single game. But yes, he originated from Hull, I want to say. It was at Hull to start off where he was on loan at Barnet and got released. So I'm hoping he can do a job for us on the left hand side. Um, next in was a loan in Lewis Dunn, who's currently injured two month nearly. Uh, he's done alright in the pre-season friendlies, 7.5 average rating and as you can see here you can probably see why. Some very good blue stats here, uh, fitness wise he's very good. Um, so yeah, um, just bear with us a moment, apologies for that, um, I'm just having to be a bit, little bit more quiet, just left it about 20 minutes, hopefully said person has gone to sleep now. Um, yeah, so the, the reason why I got this guy, you can see he's got some really good um, physical stats, mental stats aren't bad at all, none below seven. Um, composure being probably the, the worst one for that that section there. Um, but the key thing is he can play as a box to box midfielder, um, which is how I'm going to be rolling with at least one of the midfielders. Um, so yeah, pretty decent signing. He's on loan from Colchester for this season for nothing. Um, it's what I've had to do for a lot of players. Uh, next we move on to Piers Kerr. Pretty excited about this guy. I couldn't play him in any friendlies for a couple of games because we were playing in the European Under-19 Championship. So he's been playing there and I was at Eastleigh. <laughs> and as you can see, you can see here why. I mean mentally he's really really good. Off the ball could be better. Um, some of his physical sets are good but you know, first got a good first touch on him. His passing's good, tackling, marking, and he's going to be a very good defensive midfielder for us. Um, you can see here in comparison to the other players we have uh, in defensive midfield, is pretty good, and he can also play there as well, probably as a box-to-box -box midfielder, if if need be, basically. The next person we signed was Jake Hesenthaler. Um, he's the son of. Oh, what's this guy what recall now? Uh, it's really bugging me, I'm gonna have to check it out. Yeah, Andy Hasenthaler. I remember this guy from years ago when he used to he like playing for um he was playing for Gillingham until like he was about forty five or something. <laughs> I don't know, it feels like it anyway. It says he's how old? Fifty three. He was still playing like nine years ago so they've been playing till he was like 44 something like that so it's a ridiculous age to finish but yeah Jake hasn't tall I've knocked off him back and you can see probably again why I've signed him it's overall yeah, he's 10 like I'd say 10 out of 20 overall he's got some some below 10 some above but not massively but he, all round he's like an all round decent player and he can cover in defensive midfield if needs be but uh, I'm going to be playing him as a roaming playmaker because it's not that he can play there, it says here. Apart from the composure side, which is probably key, um, I just think he's going to be the most suited, suitable for it um, in terms of all the other players. Plus he's got the best passing stat out of all our midfielders. Um, he just plays short, simple passes and he runs with the ball rarely, which that's what I'm wanting. I want him to just pick it up and start passing it around, spraying it around. And he's been doing quite well. Um, in that role. He did start off as a box to box for me because uh, he was one of the first mid well, midfielders I could actually use um, besides Dunn um, in that role, uh, in the box to box role. So that's what happened there. Then on loan, oh, Exeter, sorry, I got him from Gillingham, um, Hesenthaler. Um, this guy's got his face in the way, which I believe it's, I want to say Quinn. Quinn's picture, Quinn Carter, so if, that, if you are watching, hello. Um, yeah, Gillingham was signing from. He played 113 games for them, two goals. So I think it's a pretty decent signing, if I'm being completely honest. 
Uh, but yeah, we've got Josh Tymon from Exeter on loan for the season. Uh, it's just back, back up, cover, left back. Um, looks pretty good though, overall. Some good stats. So he's uh, one I'm hoping it's going to do well for us. Teamwork, probably a little bit of a poor stat for us. And then fi finally, took a while because we were a bit shy on defensive cover, although he's been injured until recently. Uh, we've got Akil Wright alone from Plymouth. Um, he can cover, obviously, a few different positions, defensive midfield, centre mid, right back. But as you can see here, he's, he's a strong centre back, very determined. His, his heading, marking and tackling is very, very good. Um, mainly nines, anticip even anticipation is nine. Seven for bravery lets him down maybe a little bit. But yeah, he's, he's going to be more than good enough, I think, for us this season. Um, so yeah, that's that's where we're at. There's one thing I wanted to check before. Yeah, it's expectations. Many of expectation is a team reach the playoffs in the Vanarama National League. We've got to reach the first round of the FA Cup and reach the fourth round of the FA Trophy. And that is with a wage budget of 17,018k per week and no budget, transfer budget. So... Hopefully we can do something here. But worth noting, we do have Southampton as a parent club, and the only player that we could get is yet another defensive midfielder, which we've got about four now, I think. So, <laughs> yeah, we have. Well, we've got two there, and we've got two other players that can play there. Um, so we've got more than enough cover. So I'm not going to bother, even though it wouldn't cost anything. And he is pretty good, especially tackling. I don't think he's necessarily needed, and I just feel like I'd be wasting the time. Oh, he's got a lot of pros, but he's only got close sign his development. If it was side this player at any price, no brainer. So into today, into today's game, we're playing Margit, who I believe finished just outside the relegation spots. I'm pretty sure that there is 24 places. Yeah, it's 24 places, so they finished here. So they narrowly avoided relegation. So as a result, we are the favourites for this game. And they're going to play a f well, three five two or five three two, however you want to, you know, look at it. But this is a team I think we're going to start with. We've got Bob Mosley as the captain, Joe Partington as the vice captain. I was tempted to strip one of them and put he Hesenthaler because of his thirteen determination, leadership, and um, work rate is twelve, and decisions is only nine though. Um, they're the ones that you really look to for your captain. Um, I'm going to go for Max Ted, Max Dingle. He's deemed as slightly the better goalkeeper. Um, so we're going to go for him in goal. We're going to go for the back four of Murray. It's a full back on attack. This um, he's pretty looks pretty good. He's very fit as well. So hopefully we'll not have to worry about him too much getting you know rotating too much because they don't have much, much direct cover. You know, I've got players that can play it right back. You know, can slot in, but we didn't really. You know, I'm looking for the fact that he's fit to not have to worry about it. Then we're going to go for a centre-back pairing of Ellerslie. In fact, I'm not even going to do it like this. I'm going to do it on here. Ellerslie um, or and Oren Jackson because Akil Wright is not fit. You know, he's not played at all for us. I think he might come up for a sub-appearance towards the back end. Um, yeah, so Oren Jackson is going to start this game. Um, Bobby Mosley starts at left-back. He's he's fit but not as fit as Murray, so I did get like that's why I got um Tymon for cover. Um defensive midfielder is gonna be Joe Partington. A roaming playmaker is gonna be Hazentower, who's been playing very well in that position. Got Pierce Kerr for starting this game, is he's, he's done alright in the friendlies leading up to this in fact that's some, one thing I didn't look at before this game. The friendly situation. Um but yeah, Daniel Galbraith will play there as an advanced playmaker, hence why the fullback is on attack uh, for the right side. And Geraldo Martin is going to start on the left. And Adil Nabi, N Nabi is going to start up from the false nine, which I'm very pleased to actually find one for once. So the only one player who's not really suitable is Hezentala, but he's been doing really well there. Just quickly before I start the game, so it's going to be a long video this, unfortunately. That's a friendly situation. But Juba is under 21s. We lost to West Brom, surpri non surprisingly. Um, beat Weymouth, lost to Blackpool, not surprisingly. Drew 0 0, that was a bit of a worry. Gets Whitehawk. Uh, lost to Wolves, not surprised. Won these, again, not surprised. But Nuneaton, the beat is 2 1. That was a worrying game. 
very worrying game. We had some decent performances. I mean, look at Hasenthaler, 8.4. I think he did get the assist, but, but anyway, into the game, Margaret. I think for the first game I'm probably just going to put it on key highlights and I've actually changed the way I'm going to play these games now uh, mainly because of the um, you know the added things like match stats and things like that I'm going to have it on the 2D uh, from now on I've got the highlights on so you can still see the highlights but yeah as you can see where the favourites uh, opposition instructions this is my first game for Eastley um, who I based I don't think I touched on this but they, I, I had a quick look I knew it was down south somewhere but it's near uh, Southampton, Bournemouth, that sort of area, Portsmouth. So, yeah, there's quite a lot of players to, you know, tr maybe get on loan if we can get, like, like I said, Southampton as an affiliate. The higher up the leagues we get, the more likely we are going to get some decent players. So, we are the favourites. So go out there and impress me, which I think is a very, a very crap thing to say on this game, in my particular opinion. But we'll have to wait and see. It's early days. I'm expecting a win, but it's the first game of the season, it's it's wide open. That is actually, to me, very loud, but I don't know whether it's loud for you. But anyway, get into the game. It's fitting as well, actually, that our team playing blue. <laughs> so, my intro, like I say, I'm not having to change the colour of anything. I'm just going to change the badge. So, Galbraith finds Partington. And now Moses got in the left. I'm actually going on. Oh, it's a penalty. I'm just going to put it on key because of the length of the video. And I don't even think I selected a penalty taker. But it's going to be Hesenthal for the first goal of the season for us. And there it is, the first goal under my stewardship, if you like, is Hesenthal. We've got the possession football. Who did we beat? We beat one team 3 0, and we had 73% possession. If that's not possession football, I don't know what is. That's all I'm going to say. World's longest load for the highlights. For a penalty. Yes. Casually placed into the top right-hand corner. Pick that out. <coughs> so, yeah. Worth noting, Calum Geraldo Martin. His favourite number is 32, apparently. A bit of a strange one, but... Uh, I haven't given I haven't given any other lone players a you know first eleven so there's quite a few numbers I think there's four numbers to to choose from <laughs> but that's only for the full term deals full time deals but who knows I can get back into the football league first attempt or at least get a payday with a couple of FA Cup games and maybe get some money back maybe we won't have to worry too much but as we approach half time whistle is there a late chance here. Dara finds Nabi. That's Kurt. Squares it to Partington. Barnett does win the tackle, but Kerr wins it back. That's Galbraith. He's got a few screen pies in the friendlies. Partington has a shot. It's blocked. Galbraith, it gives it away to answer. He's going to have the answer for our attacks, sorts of things, because he's going to set McCormick up. Is that Ross McCormick? No. It looks like it's just going to be the... Oh, no. Hang on, Tal's let answer in and they've scored just before half time devastated big mistake from Hesenthaler gutted oh no it's not Hesenthaler take that back it was Galbraith it is a good finish to be fair but it's a bit disappointing when it's the first shot on target and we've been completely dominating so I'm gonna say we can still win this they are unlucky, to be fair. Um, you can still win this. Have a bit of belief in yourself. Because it was Galbraith that came off out, but it didn't affect Hesenthaler's performance. But he's a player. <coughs> well, it said high-profile uh, players signed them. He was kind of classed as one. Even though he's only really played at Gillingham, I, I know, you know Gillingham are you know, not a bad side, but then I won't exactly say the high profile. But needless to say, I'm happy because it's helped improve our my rating within the board. Into the second half we go, and there's been a couple of poor performances, notably these two here, the two centre backs. Was worried about the centre backs' quality for this game. 
but Murray gets it now in his advanced position. It's probably just going to be a false highlight. Isn't Tower, that man. <coughs> Excuse me. Half an hour to go. Is it time to make a change? I'll leave it another five. So we are dominating. Let's make a change. Um, Nabi has not been that bad. We are playing well, to be fair. There's only the centre backs that's let us down. It's just what can you do at this st this stage here? Um, Mason Duffy. Could put him on the wing, perhaps. He's got decent finishing. I've been trying to play him as a. In fact, Gerardo's not been playing great on his debut. So let's put, bring Mason on for him. And I'm reluctantly going to, I think, bring on Jimmy Spencer and Adil Nabi. It just gives us something different. You know, it looks like he's a big, strong sort of target man type. Murray's got an 8.1. I think he has got an assist. No, he hasn't. That's how well it's been, and that's the difference between this formation and the others. Um, the midfield has been playing quite well. I'm reluctant to take them off. I'll leave it another so many minutes. Right, let's have a look then. Let's uh, bring Raymond on. Let's give... What do you do here? What do you do? Let's put Kerr's a... No, let's give Hezenthaler a rest. Raymond could come on, but he's going to swap with Partington. And then, what I'm going to do is... In fact... Yeah, we'll confirm. And as soon as it changes like that, I'm going to... Ah, don't need to go on this screen, what am I doing? Um, instructions. I'm just going to go shoot on sight. Have a go. So we've not had any shots whatsoever on target. 1-1 one, one draw isn't a disaster, but when we're playing against a team that should have finished, that nearly got relegated, I would have been expecting a decent result, and as you can see, we've well and truly dominated here, and we've not got the result we wanted. So that's not, not the best, but there's some players I've played well, so I, I'm going to have to say they're unlucky, because we're all over him like a rash. Bobby Mosley's got them in the match with 8.8, 8.4, 8.3, some sevens, three sevens. So more than half a team playing really well. I can't be too disappointed, but... And today it's a draw, 1-1. One, one. But we'll have to see anyway. We'll, we'll see who the next game is that we're going to do. It's probably going to be in about a month's time. Um, let's just see who we've got. Oh, United win 4-1. That's nice. Oh, Leeds United. What I'm saying United. I need, to, I need to go kick myself, kick my own ass for that. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, just reserve players getting injured. Schedule. Next game is probably going to be Stockport. Chance for some revenge, perhaps. Because they got promoted, they won the league last season to get promoted into our league. So, as it stands, they're currently more favourites than us for some reason. Maybe because of home advantage. But hopefully you have enjoyed this uh, extended and change-worthy, if that's even a word, um, episode. Um, where we've had a transition from Curzon Ashton to Eastleigh um, FC. Hopefully you're going to join us in this new quest, if you like, to try and at least promote our own like profile, if you like. At the very least, I'd like to take them as far as I can go, but I, I did feel that Curzon Ashton had gone as far as I gone, could go, and I, I don't think I could have done anything else with them. Um, they've hardly got any players, by the way, of Curzon Ashton. Um, I'll have a quick look now. Curzon Ashton, Let's see if they've signed anyone in the last couple of days. If I look at um, their players, yeah, they're playing with, they were playing with strikers, uh, midfielders up front, <laughs> you know, that's how, sh uh, how shy they are, I mean, that's a youth player that we had, as is 
Stephen McGowan, that's a youth player. Jack Cannon's another youth player. Daryl Crane, another youth player. Kieran Pickering, another youth, pl youth player. Liam Howe, they haven't got any players hardly. What's the new manager playing at? No one knows. But like I say, until next time, until the Stockport game, I will. See you then. Bye-bye.